that were here last time uh, and the years before. But Lord, we, we've got them in our minds and in our hearts and we'll keep them with us forever. But Lord, at the end of the day, we know that this is your plan. This is your time. We're on your time and, and, and working according to your plan. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the message. We thank you for all that's going to happen today. And Lord, as always, Lord, give us a allow us to take a little bit of something away with us lord to share with somebody else this is my prayer for christ's sakes amen, amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, this song what i'm about to sing is in uh i'm dedicated in love and memory of my cousin terrence silvers and also sister Teresa Graves. <laughs> Goodbye, world. Goodbye, world. I'm going home, yeah. I'm going home. Goodbye, world. Goodbye, world. I'm going home, yeah. I'm going home. I'm on
morning, Union Chapel. Come on, let's say it again. Good morning, Union Chapel. This smile that's on my face is a smile of a person that is experiencing my first homecoming at Union Chapel. Amen. I'm glad to be here. Praise God. Our scripture passage for this morning is taken from the Gospel of Luke, the fifth chapter, the 18th and 19th verses. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. The Lord has been good to all of us. And it, how we know that, we woke up this morning. Lord has been good. I'm going to give you the names of the sick and the shut in, and then we'll have a little prayer. Sick and shut in is Miss Talita Brown, Miss Ruth Harris, Miss Shirley Pinnock, Miss Christine Lee, Miss Otis P. Pinnock, and Miss Willa Godfrey. And Miss Ava Parker. Let us pray. Dear God, we come to you once today. Oh Lord, we want to thank you for how you have blessed us. We thank you, oh God, how you have blessed, blessing the sick and the shut in, oh God. That you give them strength, oh God, to be and to still be with us, oh God. As I said before, God, that we thank you for those who have paved the way for us here at Union Chapel. But now, Lord, we, we try not to forget them as we move on, oh God. But we know that they are, let them know that they are in our prayers. And we say thank you, Jesus, for all your blessings. And dear Lord, right now, God, we ask you once again to lead them, to guide them, to understanding, oh God. Let them know that you have them in your hand. That, oh God, whatever come and whatever go, that they can lean on your everlasting hand. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Some of you all have been lied to. Cheated. Talked about. And mistreated. But I want you to know today. That as long as you got King Jesus. You don't need nobody else. You're here today. Not because you've been so righteous. Neither have you been so holy. And you certainly haven't done any great things. But it was God's grace that woke you up this morning. And when you come into the house of God, you should at least say thank you. Because in the old folks used to say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? To your interim pastor, Reverend Sledge only because Reverend Sledge is on my staff, and I am so grateful to see her journey, and not only that, her growth, yes. and how God is moving in her life, yes. but most of all, in your life, yes. Union Chapel, United Church of Christ, to all the clergy, to the officers of this church, and to all of you, I greet you in the words of Jesus, peace be with you. I bring you greetings from the Southern Conference, United Church of Christ, 190 congregations that make up North Carolina and Eastern Virginia, and the 600 plus clergy 
that serve here in this place here called the Southern Conference. We are grateful, brothers and sisters, for you being who you are. But one thing I want you to know is that we are living in difficult times now. Jesus says, pay attention to the times. So what is God requiring of you, not only the church, but you in particular? I just came back from Philadelphia recently. Part of the United Church of Christ Palestinian Israeli Network. And most of you all see what's on the news. But we have people who are on the ground over there in Gaza in that crisis. And there are 20,000 children that have been killed. 20,000 children that have been killed. Even children that have been injured was going through surgery and they dropped a bomb in the hospital and killed the child and the surgeon. And yet and still, the church is silent. Many clergy don't even get up and talk about a prophetic word because we're, if you're going to be a, in 21 times in the gospel, Jesus says, follow me. Follow me 21 times. That means you do what Jesus did. And so those people who are oppressed, you've ever been to the Middle East, and I've been there four or five times, we were about to be able to talk about creating an apartheid state over there in Israel, and then everything happened. And for the last eight months, we've been trying to deal with this crisis. I preached in Philadelphia, and I told them that we can no longer be silent. Because Jesus was not silent during oppression. Yes. And if you're going to follow Jesus, you got to put on the whole arm of Christ. I know it's political, but it's the righteous thing to do. Because what is God requiring of you? And I know the sermon is coming. But I feel good today. Not only do I know who I am, but I know whose I am. And so we have to get involved. We have to advocate, militate, and be able to speak out upon these oppression. And people of color, you understand what oppression is. You cannot be silent. You're going to follow Christ? Follow Christ all the way. And brothers and sisters, in his mission statement, Jesus says he didn't come for the rich and the big tall steeples. He came for the poor, the oppressed. And so when you see oppression, you have to, if you're a clergy in particular, you got to stop. And so this church can no longer be silent, brothers and sisters, because every mother's child is important to God. So I was charged to be able to give some announcement here, but... But, you know, I can't control the spirit. Now, come on. I, I try. We're having our youth event in um, Virginia Beach in July. Brothers and sisters, we talk about these children all the time. We have to find a way to introduce them to Jesus Christ. And that they may have an experience with the Lord. You have an experience with God, well, then let them have one, too, because Jesus says, let the children come. And unless you come as a little child, you can't even get into heaven, Reverend Miles, because a child does not hold grudges. You can get mad. They get mad just like that, and then a few hours later, they're playing together. I know people here in the conference got an agenda and an issue with somebody 20 years. And you go before your, I don't know, let me stop. Because I know the word. Jesus said, first you'll be reconciled to your brothers and sisters. Then you come to me. You don't be coming to me with that mamby-pamby prayer, what you looking for. And you did already injure somebody. But nobody in here at Union, this is homecoming day. Everybody in here is good people. So we're having a youth event up in Virginia Beach. And we're asking for you, to, if you know a child or can sponsor a child, to tell somebody just like somebody told you that you can make it. 
Don't you know that the crime among our 10 and 12 and 14 year olds are escalating right now? I'm talking about committing mass murder. And then being charged, the 12 year old being charged as an adult. Something is wrong with that. I know it's wonderful to come and be dressed up and all that in the church, but you got to do something when you leave this place. So I am asking for you to be able to make sure that some child have the experience up in Virginia Beach to be with their colleagues and their friends and to be able to have a good time. And we're putting forth because the conference has designated the last two, next couple of years to focus on our youth and our children. And if you just want a reality check, look around. Where are they? We could have brought them. So I, I, I just want to focus on children because I know how important it is. I'm a father four times over. I know how important it was for me to be in my children's life, specifically when their mom passed away and they were four and five years old. You have to be in these children's lives that make a difference in their lives. And then also on Saturday, we will be at uh, Peace in Greensboro, our German partnership. We got a partnership with the Church of the Rhineland. I've been over there a couple of times, and every time I go over there, they, they, they spread out the table for us. And I've asked the clergy and, and anyone who is able to come and, and show our guests the hospitality called the Southern Conference. Give them a little bit of that Southern flavor. <laughs> and so we're asking for you to show up at Peace uh, on Market Street. You can get the address uh, there, uh, here. Let me just give you an address since I'm giving all these announcements. Uh, 2714 West Market Street in Greensboro. And we will be sharing uh, who we are as a conference because we are evangelical and reform. We are congregation Christian and we are Afro-Christian. And so we need to have these conversations because the Southern Conference is the most unique conference in the whole United Church of Christ. Because a third of us are conservative, a third of us are progressive, a third of us are African American. We have the largest amount of African American churches in the whole United Church of Christ. So our diversity is our mosaic to the United Church of Christ. We are beautiful in our expression. Brothers and sisters, it is a gift among us. And then after Jesus, let us go back to the beginning when God created Adam and Eve. After he gave them each their assignment, then God said the very first commandment was to be fruitful and multiply. So Union Chapel on this Friends and Families Day, and I know that you're in transition. Begin to plant the seeds now for your future. And then be fruitful and then you will multiply to the glory of God. God bless you. Thank you. Ooh, if he wasn't my boss and hadn't trained me well, I'd be like, okay, we're going home now. <laughs> But because he trained me well, and it is getting hot in here, uh, that means that he just, he kind of uh, touched on my sermon, even though we're together 24-7, it seems like um, I didn't tell him what my sermon was, but thank you for the introduction. <laughs> well, I want to recognize our visitors today on homecoming. You all remember, speaking of assignment, what your assignment was? It was to bring up, well, that was my plus one right there. But he didn't get the message to bring the other plus one. I guess he did because Reverend Wells is here. But so I want to recognize our visitors. First, I think I see some of my clergy friends out there, um, my clergy UCC and other clergy. Would you stand first, please? Amen. 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 Thank you so much for being here. All any other visitors, if you brought someone, would you stand on behalf of them or have them stand for themselves? Would you stand again, please? <laughs> this is my other plus one that I did that was hiding back there. Uh, 
So I, in my other life, my other time that I have, I am the executive director for the Drumline and Dancing of Swan Middle School. I am Belinda. She is Linda. <laughs> she is the other half of my executive team. We work together just like we work together and we work, work together. So thank you so much for being here, along with any other visitors that we that we have that did not stand to be recognized. The other thing that we have been practicing is our greeting, right? Amen. Our special greeting. So we've been doing this for three weeks, two weeks, and so we got it down, right? Those who have been here for the last two weeks. So we're going to show those who are visiting us or who are just here today how it's done. Come on. Amen? Yes. All right. So here at Union Chapel, we have created a different type of greeting to welcome you. And it's simply this. You look at someone and you say to them, smile. God got you. And they look at you and they say to you, smile. God got you. Now, however, we're not going to do it in our seats. We are going to get up, move around, and as you feel comfortable, and go to someone that did not come with you today and say that to them and wait for the response, and then they say it back to you. And so we're going to move around and do it, and when I come back, when the music starts playing, that means that's time for you to go back to your seat. Amen? Amen. All right. Didn't that not feel good? Got you moved. Now, what I forgot to tell you was that the ketchup or the ketchup part is coming at, at lunchtime, not here. So I forgot to tell you not to share your photos and all those types of things. But as long as you got the main message, smile, God got you, you made somebody day, you made somebody weak, that's all that matters. And speaking of that, I want to announce the birthdays. Birthdays, Ricky Turner Jr. May 26th, Woo. Alicia Chavis, May 26th, Betty Yellow, May 30th, Holly, 
Haley Guy, May 30th. Linda Moore, May 31st. Susan Graves, who was, who was, and I can, can say still is, one of our associates here who now is pastoring at First Congregational and in Kings Mountain. We have a lot of firsts. And Jerry Sellers, which will be June 1st. Yay! <laughs> Dr. Davis said some of our announcements, the ones that were, were, um, were very important, but I also want to say to you that as, as um, it was said, is that I am the interim pastor here. Um, I actually work for the Southern Conference, of which I work for Reverend Dr. Edward Davis, who is our conference minister. Um, I want to say publicly that without his blessings from, for me to be here, I could not be here because I have to split my time, and therefore I just have to get up two hours earlier so that I can make sure that I get all my Southern Conference work done so that I can get Union Chapel work done. But nevertheless, I am very grateful, grateful for not only the opportunity that you, Union Chapel, has given me, but also the opportunity that Reverend Dr. Davis has, has given me as well. Reverend Weathers is also uh, the ACM, of course, the Associate Conference Minister for the Eastern North Carolina Association. And I think I speak for both of us when I say that he is always giving us opportunity. I think I speak for these ladies as well when I say that he is always giving someone an opportunity. So thank you, thank you, thank you. The other announcement I wanted to make to make sure of is that speaking of splitting my time, um, on Saturday, next Saturday, June 1st, we're going to have a meeting here at Union Chapel for all the organizational chairs and co-chairs. Now I will be coming back from the German meeting that we're having in Greensboro, um, which ends at two, so I should make it by three, but just in case I don't, Deacon Sheldon, Sheldon would know what to do until I get here. But I also hope to see some of you at, the, uh, at Peace Church as well. You will be very enlightened. Um, we were talking about learning UCC polity, of which I know some of you have been in United Church of Christ all of your life. But can you say some of us have been somewhere all of our life and still know what we didn't know all of our life? So if you come to this, you will be enlightened by all the different strands that make up the Southern Conference United Church of Christ. The panel is dynamic. Um, the panel also consists of our uh, former um, conference minister, um, Reverend, Rollin, Reverend Dr. Roland Russell. He will, and, Irv, and also yours truly, Reverend Irvin Milton, along with many, many others. So please plan to come. Please plan to come. Those are the announcements that I wanted to, uh, to make and again say welcome, welcome, welcome. At this time, speaking of UCC policy and history, we're going to have Mrs. Rondalyn Turner to come up and give us our church history. It is actually in your, uh, in your, in your program. <laughs> when I asked her if she, since I'm getting to know everybody uh, in a different kind of way, since I said, um, do you have the history? Can, do, you, do you know the history? She said, well, I guess I do since I wrote it. So <laughs> what better person to give it, right? <laughs> Dick and Sheldon set me up on that one. He didn't tell me. Yeah, 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 I'm a, yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> 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 about that small detail. So she's going to give us our history. Okay, good morning, Union Chapel. Good morning. Shelton also has a wife that could uh, come up here and do this as well. So, But I'll, I'll, I'll take control this Sunday. But my own history um, with homecoming, 30 years ago, I was expecting my first child. And so uh, we came out here to homecoming. I was excited about that. Two years later, I was expecting my second child, who was born on homecoming. That's the Ricky, Ricky Turner Jr., whose birthday is today. And my third homecoming, well, during my marriage, my third homecoming, I was pregnant again with my third child, <laughs> who was born in November. So as you say, Pastor, be fruitful and multiply. I did my duty there. So now for the history of the church. 
Union Chapel United Church of Christ is said to be the oldest church in the Lincoln Christian Conference and has an interesting histor historical background. The whites of Union Ridge community started a church, built a structure that they called the Old Union Meeting House in 1815. They constructed a bush harbor nearby and invited the African Americans to worship beside them. Later, the whites built a frame church with a balcony and the African Americans were invited to worship in the balcony where all enjoyed days of fellowship as they sang, prayed, shouted, and preached together. By mutual agreement in 1870, the people of Union Ridge helped the former slaves to build a church, which they named Union Chapel. A member of Union Ridge Christian Church helped birth Union Chapel Christian Church by donating, by donating a tract of land, which is our present site. Union Ridge members gave trees that were carried to sawmills to make ready for use, and the African Americans built a small log church. It was constructed it was constructed of roughly hewn logs, benches peg with peg legs, and stove pipes hanging out of the windows. Different preachers preached one Sunday each month. These preachers were Reverend Moses Fike, Reverend Rufus Whitaker, and Reverend W. D. Dunn. Reverend Charlie Ray was the first was the first pastor. In addition to being a church, Union Chapel was also a schoolhouse. <laughs> In the year of 1894, a second frame church was built under the leadership of Reverend Charlie W. Ray. In 1934, the third church building was completed through the, the hard work and dedication of various individuals. Money was hard to come by during the Depression, but which was about $300 on hand at the start to help the, with the help of God. Free labor and donations from members and friends. The church was built and paid for, and pews were made. The cost of the church was around $6,000. In the 1930s, Reverend Capps served as pastor. In 1938, Reverend F.A. Har Har Hargert, <laughs> Reverend Walter Howard, and Reverend T.J. Levester served as interim pastors. In 1941, under the leadership of C. Hodge, Union Chapel was the first black church in Alamance County to have a choir. These were years of growth in the church. Reverend William M. Lake became pastor. The church began, began to grow and a new brick church was started. The members appointed a building, a, bu a building committee. The church purchased the building materials and secured a loan. Reverend Cletus G. Lee became pastor in 1955 and the church was completed in 1956. During this time, a junior choir was organized under the leadership of Reverend Lee. The Willing Workers Club built a hut for fellowshipping and homecomings. The church received a, <clears throat> a communion table, pulpit set, flower stands, and two chairs. In later years, the church agreed to have the pews covered. In 1971, Reverend John H. Jones became the pastor and the church burned its mortgage in 1973. Under his leadership, the church agreed to become a part of the United Church of Christ. Thus, Union Chapel Christian Church became Union Chapel Church of Christ. Two fellowship halls were constructed while Reverend Jones was pastor, and the church once again grew in membership and in spirit. The church purchased its first van, adjoining land, and remodeled the sanctuary. They also installed a heating and air conditioning system, organized and organized a missionary circle, received women on the trustee board, and became a night Bible study during this, this time period. In 1994, Reverend Irvin E. Milton became pastor of United Church. Now this is when I started having kids. <laughs> Some of the physical accomplishments included paying off the mortgage of the new fellowship hall, the paving of the parking lot, purchased the stained glass windows, a steeple, and a church van. The church also started a male chorus, second generation choir, later became the gospel choir, little children choir, later became the young people for Christ choir, UC missionaries, morn morning Bible study, junior usher board, and developed its first church directory. Also during this time, the downstairs was remodeled, in a choir room 
the downstairs were remodeled, and a choir room and a business office, all-purpose room, and a pastor's office was made from this. The baptism pool was moved inside the fellowship hall. New commercial appliances were bought for the kitchen, and the state-of-the-art sound system was purchased. The vestibule and the choir stand was also remodeled. Union Chapel has doubled in its active membership and tripled its budget. Some of the organizations of our church is part of, that is part of and are paying dues include OCWM, which is our church wider mission, and the Franklin Center. Reverend Milton retired in September 2024, I'm sorry, September the 24th, 2023, after 29 years of being a pastor at Union, Union Chapel United Church of Christ. Union Chapel began with a rich history, and God has constantly been with its members. It is the belief of the members of Union Chapel that God is not through with us yet. From the beginning of our ancestors until this present time, we have been truly blessed. Although physical changes have come and gone, we are moving to greater heights, and spiritually, we are still intact. Amen. Thank you so much. Somebody say it's offering time. Offering time. Amen. Amen. It is that time. Uh, we uh, were invited to uh, provide or contribute a special amount. If you have that, you may do that at this time. But we're going to walk around a little bit, get some blood flowing in your body a little bit more. Amen. Uh, we're going to ask that the ushers will come and prepare us for the offering. Amen. Give us some instructions at this time. Amen. Amen. Been a long time since we did that, ain't it? <laughs> That's all right. If they would let us know what to do and then we'll have our offertory prayer. Would you stand? Let's start there. Lest we forget. Let us pray. Eternal and all wise God, we thank and praise you for the opportunity to give unto your household of faith. We ask even right now that you would bless these uh, offerings unto you, God, that th it may be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. For anybody that does not have to give, God, we ask that you would bless them, that they will be able to give on the next time. We ask these and all other things in Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen.
Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turn. Springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and clouds in their courses above join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, 
Oh, great is thy faithfulness morning by, by morning the new mercies I can surely see. Oh, great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, unto me. Great is thy, can I take my time, thy faithfulness, O great. Is thy faithfulness, how many know it? For every morning by, by morning, new mercies I, I see. Blessed hands, oh, always have provided. Oh, great is thy faithfulness, so great is thy. Faithfulness, so great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, to me. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Great is your faithfulness. Thou faithfulness. How many of us know God has been so faithful to us? He woke us up this morning. He started us on our way. We have someone that's 102 amongst us. We already know that Union Chapel is blessed, but how many of us can say that you are truly, truly blessed? Thank you so, so much for that. Thank you so, so much for that. I want to say again, to our conference minister and all the clergy that is with that are with us today, I say thank you. Thank you to the choir and to the musicians and our sound tech back there. And um, I want to say a special thanks to our kitchen ministry who are over there preparing for us to um, to have a meal together later on. I also want to say two special thank yous. One to Miss Miss Ella because. The program that you see, um, I gave her all of those things uh, probably last night. And she got all of them done. And I think I said to, to Rosalind, Rosalind, am I saying that right? Uh, Rosalind, when, it, she, when I sh called her about reading the um, church history, Rondolin, 
I just called about reading church church history. I said, well, tell Miss L. I hope she's not overwhelmed, but we're trying to get our program back to some type of normalcy. So I gave her a lot of changes. I gave uh, Deacon Sheldon a hard time a few minutes ago, but Deacon Sheldon has been answering all of my 50 million texts. <laughs> So, so uh, thank you for answering all of the 50 million texts that I sent you every time I thought of one little thing to run by you. But I, as our conference minister, there's a lot of things that I can say that he's taught us. But one thing he's taught us is, is collaboration. And don't assume that, that you know without running it past someone else. So there's a lot of things that are minute, I know, but I still feel good about asking him. And then he is also a collaborative person because he shoots it out to the other deacons to make sure that we're all on the same page. So I cannot um, thank him as chair and the other uh, deacons as well um, who have just been just just been been there and transition is not easy. Transition is hard, especially when you're trying to do a, a new thing or get back to the old thing, I guess I should say, because everything that you think of is not new. So I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you again to all of you who are joining us virtually as well as you those of you who are here in person with us so let us pray Lord, i just want to say thank you thank you for bringing us to today thank you for allowing us to see another homecoming without the rain at this time but thank you for all of those that you have have brought to us thank you for the message that you have given me to hide behind the sacred desk so that they will hear you and hear not me. Lord, but at the end, I hope that someone will take this with them, take them outside of these four walls and spread the gospel, spread the news, evangelize to someone in that they may also get the word today, even if they're not present with us. Again, I just say thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. I, I did not an, um, announce announce this, but I want to want to say this in case it hasn't been said uh, about Miss um, Teresa Graves, who passed passed away uh, in, over the weekend. Um, her funeral will be Thursday at 1 p.m. and I'm assuming it's here. Uh, Thursday at 1 p.m. Uh, here, um, the uh, Reverend Irvin Milton, um, the former pastor, will will deliver the message. And um, I will be here to preside and do whatever is, is needed um, at that time, not only for the family, but for the deacons, for Union Chapel as a whole. So I did not want to forget to announce that. So are you ready for the word? Yes. Hey, man, that's the most excitement I got. I'm going to have to invite you more often. <laughs> that's the most excitement I have, have gotten. All right, that is a word from the Lord today. You have already heard the scripture, and you will hear the scripture throughout my sermon, but I will not repeat it again as you have already heard it. I want to start off by saying, do we remember the whiz? The, the old one, the new one, the in-between one, all of the ones that all had the same message. But all Dorothy wanted to do was to do what? Go home, go home. But before she could appreciate going back home, she had to go through some trials and tribulations to get back home. She had to endure some life lessons and teachings that would make her better, more appreciative of the home, of her home, whenever she got the chance to go back to it. The movie starts off with her not appreciating home so much. Stephanie Mills sang the song in the production entitled, When I Think of Home, that said, When I think of home, I think of a place where there's love overflowing. I wish I was home. I wish I was back there with the things I've been knowing. But it took God taking her out of her comfort zone, yeah. swooping her up against her will uh -huh. to appreciate the love that she had been forced to leave behind. Yeah. And now she knows how much home meant to her yeah. and can't wait to get back there. 
Growing up, we probably all said those famous words. I can't wait to get out of this house. <laughs> but, but let me rephrase that. We probably thought those words. But when I grew up, you had to be careful what you asked for because you just might get it. So instead of saying we said it, I'm going to say we thought it. But I want, to you, I want you all to close your eyes just for a few minutes and silently fill in the blank when I think of home. I want to use as a subject today nothing more than when I think of home. Leaving the rest of it to your imagination throughout the sermon. Webster defines home as the place where one lives permanently. And the word home means this. No matter where you are, no matter what happens to you, no matter what circumstances you might face, you have a place to go. But luckily, God's definition supersedes Webster. Yeah. Because the truth is, everyone don't have a home to go back to once they leave. But luckily, in the eyes of God, home is not a place or a physical dwelling. In the eyes of God, home is in the person, not the place. Uh -huh. Home is wherever you feel the presence of Jesus. Yeah. But sometimes it does take going back home to share the good news of your life just from having Jesus in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Just as with our demon-possessed man. Whether you believe in demons or not, in our scripture, Jesus had just healed a demon-possessed man. Mm -hmm. Not just any demon-possessed man, a man who had a whole legion of demons. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Just to put it in perspective, a Roman military legion consisted of about 6,000 soldiers. Uh -huh. Because of the many demons, the man had unnatural strength. But unlike Dorothy, this man wasn't that anxious to go back to what he called home, where he came from, only because he wanted to follow Jesus. And he didn't realize he didn't have to be up close and personal within an eyesight of Jesus, uh -huh. because Jesus had omnipresence, yeah. omnipresence. Uh -huh. He was everywhere. Yeah. And while scripture doesn't say this, perhaps, perhaps, when he closed his eyes, he viewed being with Jesus, just hanging out with Jesus, as already being home. If one truly believes home is indeed being in the physical presence of Jesus, and not some frame we spend thousands of dollars on to live in. But Jesus didn't see it that way. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Yeah. Jesus did not let him, but said, go home to your real home, yeah. to your own people, because the best way to repay me is to tell them how much the Lord has done for you. Yeah and how he has had mercy on you. Yeah. Jesus was sending him home to share what he had experienced, mm -hmm. the good news of what he had done and could do. In other words, he was worth more to Jesus out of his physical presence well, than in it. Well. Jesus was telling this man, whose life had been radically transformed away from home, that he couldn't go with him right now. Mm -hmm. He still had work to do. Yeah. Okay. He needed to go back to his family and friends. Uh -huh. 
Jesus told him that the best way that he could serve him and the kingdom of God was to go back home and share what had happened to him. Yeah. Not dwelling on the past, but living for the present yeah. Yeah. and looking towards the future. As our song further says, maybe, just maybe, there was a chance for him to go back there to that place called home uh -huh. because he had now new direction. Uh -huh. Just as this man's anxiety was stirred, just thinking about going home to his family, mm -hmm. coming to any kind of homecoming can do the same. Your world has changed, and it can bring a lot of joy, yeah. celebration, and a whole lot of remember wins of yeah. those things you would like to forget. Yeah. Yeah. There are always some knowns and unknowns of what to expect. Uh -huh. But taking all of that away, I want to talk to you about this. How homecoming allows us to embrace one another's healing one another's transformations. Uh -huh. Homecoming allows us the opportunity to practice the grace of forgiveness. Yes. Yes, yes. Homecoming allows us the opportunity to practice the grace of acceptance. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. And homecoming allows us to reflect on the past and look towards the future. Uh -huh. You all know the saying, I may not be where I want to, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. It encapsulates the idea that life is a journey. Yes. And even though we may not have reached our ultimate goals or desires, we should still be thankful for the progress we've made and the distance we've traveled from our past selves Therefore, we should embrace another's transformation. Mm -hmm. Because just maybe they have convinced time to slow down, giving them time to grow up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you imagine all the things that happened on the day this man returned to his home? Mm. The things going through his mind, like wondering if he would be accepted mm -hmm. Or if he was even going to be able to stick around uh -huh. long enough to see. Could he endure the stares and whispers? Mm. He knew where he was going because his world, as they knew it, had changed his face mm. after experiencing all his woes of life. Uh -huh. But the fact still remained. For years, he had been a terror to his family. Uh, yeah. His friends and his community. Mm -hmm. He had attacked and frightened many people over the years mm -hmm. with, this, with his words and actions. The Bible, however, tells us that, the more than, that more than once the community had tried to help this man, mm -hmm. but each time he would return to his old ways. Yeah. Wow. Each time he would go back to living in the local cemetery, uh -huh. harming himself and being a threat to others. But how many of us know when we are on assignment from the heavens above, mm -hmm. everything is possible. Yeah. Yeah. And it is impossible to be that person you used to be, yeah. in spite of. Uh -huh. Suddenly, the just like the raindrops that fall have new meaning, so do your actions. Well. He was no longer the man who was known as the town's demon-possessed man. Uh -huh running around naked in the local graveyard. Uh -huh. yeah. All he needed was a second chance to prove yeah. his mind had been healed through the power of Jesus. Yeah. And this was not just a moment in time, but a new lifestyle for him. Yeah. Sometimes when we can come home to our or to homecomings, the first thing someone says to us is, I remember when. Yeah. And most of the time, instead of leading with the positive, they lead with the negative. Yeah. And we want to hold up our church finger and tiptoe quietly away. <laughs> or think, should we just run away? Mm. Or should we try and stay? Mm. Or would it be better to just let things be? Yeah. But then it hits us. 
homecoming, whether it be church, college, or family, can provide us a wonderful opportunity to embrace a time of healing and wholeness, a time to embrace so we stay and rejoice in one another's growth and transformations. Uh -huh. It's a time to share our life stories of how the Lord is continuing to help us become the very people he wants us to be. Yes. Yes. It's a time to invest in one another and encourage one another and support one another. Mm -hmm. It's a time to remember our past transgressions or, or just that, mm -hmm. past transgressions. Yeah. Therefore, homecoming allows us the opportunity to practice the grace of forgiveness. Yeah. Living here in this brand new world might seem like a fantasy uh -huh. to some, but it has taught me to forgive again. Yeah. And I am hoping it has taught others the same. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you don't have to do this, mm -hmm. but I want to see how many I get. So raise your hand if you have always lived the perfect Christ-like life. I ain't get no hands, I ain't get no amens, I ain't get no shouts, I ain't get no hand claps. I'm still waiting. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. So exactly. We have all done some foolish things. Whether our friends and family told us or not, we know it. Whether we admit it or not, we know it. But the Apostle Paul wrote these words at the Church of Ephesians. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven yeah. you. Yeah. Paul wrote those words because he understood that at times we can all say and do things we wish we could take back. Yeah. Just as he and the church at Corinth had done, mm -hmm. along with him and Apostle Peter. Mm -hmm. Paul understood that at times people just got on each other's nerves. That's right. That's right. This is just what happens when people get together and start sharing life. Yes. Or as my kids say, start lifing. Life. Not everyone sees everything the same way. Yeah. Have you ever been at your family reunion and it ended in a fight? Don't answer that. <laughs> Don't answer that. <laughs> someone overshared their joys and then someone overshared their concerns. And before you knew it, things didn't end on a good note. That's why over and over again, Paul wrote to this church and to that church. He reminded them of the imp, I-M-P, or a small demon that lurks inside all of us. This is probably why Jesus included, forgive us our trans trespasses as we also forgive others of their trespasses. In his prayer to his disciples. But sometimes you have to forgive yourself before you can allow others to do the same. As is the case with the man in our scripture. For years, this man had lived an insane life. He had no doubt brought a lot of pain and suffering. But now it was a time to forgive, yes. to practice forgiveness. And as we all know, that is not an easy thing to do. Yeah. But it is a necessary thing to yeah, do. Yeah. Wherever we experience a time, wherever, whenever we experience a time of homecoming, in the church, in our family, or with our friends, we have a wonderful opportunity to practice the grace of forgiving yeah. one another. Yeah. This is the time to say, in spite of our past disagreements, uh -huh. I forgive you. Thank you. This is the time to do just what the Apostle Paul writes. Be kind to one another, uh -huh. tenderhearted, uh -huh. forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Yeah. Turn those negative remembers when, remember, turn those negatives and remember when into 
I see you have transformed uh -huh. your life from the negative. I remember when. Uh -huh. So, homecoming allows the us the opportunity to practice the grace of acceptance. Yes. It helps us to realize not everyone stays the same over time. Mm -hmm. Our lives may have changed a little or a lot, mm -hmm. but it changed. Yes. Yes. Our surroundings may have changed a little yes. or a lot, mm -hmm. but it changed. Uh -huh. Our attitudes and philosophies of life may have changed a little or a lot, uh -huh. but it changed. Do you remember when you left the house for whatever reason, college, marriage, work, for a period of time, and came back home either to live or visit? Uh -huh. You didn't find the house the same. Uh -huh. Things had been moved around. Your bedroom had become something you didn't recognize. <laughs> You had to accept the changes that had been made, and if you stayed any time, it took a few days, weeks, or months to adjust. Uh -huh. In this man's case, the family that this man left was gone. His wife had changed, his children had changed, they had to learn to accept a new normal of life. Uh -huh. And I am sure it was quite an adjustment, yeah. those first few days, weeks, and months. Mm -hmm. So homecoming allows us to meet each other where they are, mm -hmm. where you are, and embrace your newness when we practice the grace of acceptance. Yes. We get the opportunity to accept everyone and rejoice in their diversity and differences of opinions. Yes. It allows us to enlarge our umbrellas of life mm -hmm. and welcome one another in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Homecoming is a time where we can embrace each other's viewpoints because we know at some point we will part ways again until the Lord says the same. Yes. Yes. In the words of my fellow sufferer, that we meet again next year. Yes. It is a time that we must look into our hearts to find a world full of grace and acceptance. Yes. Homecoming is a time for those who have different musical taste, traditional, gospel, contemporary, gospel rap, gospel, southern, gospel, and everything in between yes. to accept one another and rejoice in the fact that God is the God of yesterday. Yes. He, God is the God of today yes. and tomorrow. Yes. After all, who knows what type of music the Holy Spirit will teach us when it comes to the future. So we must be ready to dance to the sound of whatever he gives us, yeah. just as David. Homecoming is a time when the body of Christ recognizes that it is different, mm -hmm. it is diverse, and instead of rejecting all the diversity to rejoice in the diversity. Mm -hmm. Last week, we talked about connecting the dry bones, you remember? Yeah. As with those bones, the body of Christ's toes are different than the body of Christ's fingers. And body of Christ's fingers different than body of Christ's eyes and ears. And all have different functions, just as each of us have different gifts. But at the very top, at the very top, is the head. It is the head of Christ, who is Jesus Christ, our Savior, the Lord. Homecoming provides us a wonderful opportunity to practice the spirit of Pentecost, as we did last Sunday. Uh -huh. The spirit of seeing how the Holy Spirit is working in and through one another differently. Yes. Homecoming is a time where we rejoice and relish in each other's faith walk. Mm. Homecoming is a time when we connect those dry bones to each other mm. so that we can become a part of one another yes. again. As we are doing that, let's not forget that homecoming is a time of reflecting on the past but keeping our eyes on the prize, well, the well, future. Well. But there is something deeper that I want you to understand. Uh -huh. While we look forward to being in the presence of Jesus in heaven one day, going home to see all our loved ones who have already made it into the heavens. Yes. 
It is just as important that we understand this. We can live in the presence of Jesus right now during homecoming because the Bible shares the significance of both physical home here on earth and our eternal home Jesus is preparing for us. The man in our scripture has already proven to us that we can't go to our home with Jesus until he tells us to come. So why not make the best of the direction we have been given yeah. right here at home? Uh -huh. Home is, after all, the place where we live out God's grace. Uh -huh. It's the testing ground of faith. Mm. It's the place where we can struggle and fail and begin again. Yeah. Where we forgive and are forgiven. Mm -hmm. Where we love and are loved well. without reservation. Yeah. It is a place where we are taught to love for real. Uh -huh. It should be a place where we can laugh together and enjoy each other yeah. in spite of our past. Yeah. But coming home to our physical location that has a number, a street name, a zip code, yeah. can have mixed emotions, yeah. just as it did for the man Jesus sent home. Mm -hmm. You sometimes don't know what to expect. That's right. When this church was built, no one knew it would still be here in 2024. Yeah. I said to Deacon Shelton, we got to spruce up the church for homecoming. He said to me, we're just happy there is homecoming. <laughs> 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 now, Deacon Shelton, I understand. As you think about all the people that have walked through the doors of the church yeah. since its inception in 1870, when the people of Union Ridge helped the former slaves to start their own church, mm -hmm. now named U Union Chapel. Mm -hmm. No one knew what the future held. So yes, we are glad to have homecoming. Yeah. Thinking about all the people that have sat in the peg leg pews in the first church in 1870, yeah. to the second church in 1894, yeah. to the third church in 1934, to the current church we sit in today. Yeah. Yes, we are glad to have homecoming. Yeah. No one knew today we would be sitting in nice plush pews, yeah. the kind that you don't have to worry about getting the splendors out from wherever. <laughs> that it will take you to next Sunday to get out. So yes, we are glad to have homecoming. Yes. And who knew today would mark the 30th year your former pastor, Reverend Irvin Milton, was called to this church. Mm -hmm. And during his time, you got to pay off the mortgage mm -hmm. of the fellowship hall. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are glad today is homecoming. All the people that have taken Holy Communion, listened to a sermon, and called this place their home. Yeah. No one knew we would still be around to tell about it in 2024. Yes. No one knew we would have a 102-year-old person oh, yeah. to tell us about all of this. Yeah. And thinking about all the people who have gone on, on, who are lying out in the cemetery. For those of us who are here, we are glad to be experiencing homecoming yeah, on this yeah, day, yeah. May 26, 2024. Yeah. So today at the service and before you go home, take advantage of coming home. Walk around the church, the sanctuary, the classrooms, the fellowship hall, and the grounds. Mm. Reflect, reflect, reflect. Yeah. Share the stories of the church, of those who built, watched over, and provided for the buildings and grounds that we have today. Yeah. I got to do this yesterday as I was preparing for this sermon. Reflect over the prayers that have been said, yeah. the songs that have been sung, and the people that have walked from their cars to church Sunday after Sunday, mm -hmm. or the people who had to walk to church Sunday after Sunday, because black people back then didn't have cars. Mm -hmm. The people who gave trees that were carried to a sawmill, and the black hands that built a small log church. Uh -huh. And let's not forget, 
the no air conditioner, and the stove pipe hanging out the window. <laughs> Thank God for a home cover with heat and air today. So rejoice in what has happened in the past and thank God for the present and future to come. Yes. Remember, the man in our scripture didn't think he would ever see a homecoming day where his transformation was embraced, grace and mercy was extended, and he would be accepted. He could look to the future without his past haunting him. I also remember why Dorothy, Dorothy from our weird story, needed the scarecrow, the tin woodman, and the lion mm -hmm. to, help her, to help her get back home. Yeah. The good news today is all we need is to carry Jesus in our hearts yeah. to welcome us home. Yeah. Yeah. So today at Union Chapel, United Church of Christ, this is a good day. good day. It's homecoming. Yeah. It's a great day to embrace the good things that are happening in each other's lives. Yeah. How he is transforming all of us more into his image. Yeah. It's a great day to embrace how God has forgiven us uh -huh. and how we can forgive others. Yeah. It's a great day to encourage one another whether we may find ourselves in our present walk yeah. with Christ. Yeah. It's a day to rejoice in our uniqueness and diversity. Yeah. It's a great day to praise God yeah. for the past and pray for the future. Yeah. This is an interesting story that happened when the children of Israel were entering into the promised land. Mm -hmm. We find the story in Joshua chapter 4. Mm -hmm. The Lord gave Almighty, the Lord Almighty, had instructed the Israelites after they had crossed the Jordan River to pick up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan River and make a monument on their side of the river. Yeah. Those 12 stones were to stand as a reminder of God's faithfulness and his promise, mm -hmm. his faithfulness for being with them the past 40 years, mm -hmm. watching over them, providing for them, and walking with them. They were also to stand as a reminder that the God who was with them in the past would always, always be with them in the present and in the future. Yeah. They were to take their children and allow them to see the stones. Mm -hmm. They were to take their grandchildren yeah. and do the same. Yeah. Each generation was to remember the stories of the past. Yeah how God was faithful to his people, and how God would be there with them in the future. Homecoming is one of the most wonderful feelings in the world. But brothers and sisters, as joyful and thrilling as it is to come home on this earth, there is nothing compared to the thrill believers will experience when they finally come to their real home. Yeah. So, as I end, I invite you again to close your eyes and reflect again on our subject, When I Think of Home. Ask yourself, as you embrace one another after service, is my answer different from what I started with? Well, Dorothy eventually made it back to her brick and mortar home. You will eventually make it to your spiritual home. Mm. In the meantime, remember Jesus has omnipresence. Mm -hmm. wow. Wherever you are, so is he. Yes, yes, yes. But until that day, on this homecoming day, mm -hmm. that we are so happy to see Deacon Sheldon, mm. I say, on behalf of all of the officers, all of the members, all of you, I say, welcome to your home here at Union Chapel, yes. where we believe God is not through with us yet. Amen. And we will continue yes. marching 
and offering our praises mm -hmm. to Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 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 And I believe if any one of us were invited uh, to the White House by President Biden, we would gladly accept. We would buy probably a new suit. Ladies would buy them a new outfit, new high heel shoes, and have the best because we had been invited to the White House by the President. But there is one that continues to invite us. Without any fanfare, he just says, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy burden, and I will give you rest. I don't know about anybody else, but I have found out that that rest is not like any other rest that I have ever experienced. And I have only found it because, as the preacher has said so well today, he walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me that I'm his own. If you are without this spirit that dwells in our hearts and you are able this morning uh, just to stand to witness and to testify that I have already know this man from Galilee who was taken to Golgotha Hill with his hands and his feet nailed to the cross, who was pierced in his side, and the blood ran and forgave me of my sins. If you are able, and those of you who are, if you will stand, and just perhaps, after hearing this Raymond word this morning, you want to know this person that is called Jesus the Christ in the pardon of your sins and one day make that your home. We invite you to come. Uh, if you need someone to escort you, the deacons will. If you need someone to discuss, discuss, uh, escort you, anyone else will.
Let's go to the Lord. Our Father in heaven, we come to you once again, thanking you for all that you have done. Father God, we want to thank you for the food that's been prepared. Father God, let it be nourishing to our physical bodies. And Father God, we just thank you now for the nourishment we have had for our spiritual bodies. Lord God, we pray for those that go without today. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. 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 And amen.